Here I am in Welshpool and I'm down by Welshpool's Lock on the Newton, New, Newtown Canal which flows from Newtown that way and goes back up to the Shropshire Union via the Llandidno Canal that way. Sadly that way there's a blockage. So here's the lock. Now this is a single lock, i.e. it will take one boat. If you look down there, that is a gap for just one boat. So the only way to get across is to walk across the gate. So here we are. Notice these are padlocked now to stop vandals. As a boater, you'd have a key for that. So because the sun's up there, I'm gonna have to walk backwards otherwise the camera will bleach out. There it says Welsh Pool Lock over there. This one was recently worked on. I think the gates were replaced, possibly, I'm not certain, a few years ago. It's nice to see they've done a bit of work around here to make it somewhere pleasant to sit. The building over there, where obviously boats used to moor under the canopy and load and unload, became the Powers Land Museum, and then it became something else. Not sure what. As you can see, the clouds, those trees have stood out against the black clouds. It could rain again at any moment, but the mo as we are at the moment, it's, uh, it's quite sunny. This is the walk down. I'm just going to turn around. You probably won't see much because of the sun, but there's the lock behind us as we continue along. This, of course, if this wasn't cut off from the main canal network further under that bridge, it would be a very busy canal, this, because it goes through some lovely scenery. And further down that way, the way we came, towards Newport and its terminus, it runs alongside the River Severn, right alongside it. As you can see, there was a, what they call a winding hole or a winding hole there. Actually, it's a winding hole because they used to use the wind to help them turn. There's still something going on there. It's called the wolf. Let's go and have a look. I actually met the guys that painted this rather nice um, piece of wall art. Diversity. Canal side buildings here have been nicely uh, renovated. This is the, uh, the, the agent's office. Each of these buildings would have served to function. This one being the agent himself, who is in charge of the dock. You can see all of the buildings there. This would have been a busy area because with the farms around here, uh, there would have been animal food, and, and stuff to put on the fields coming in and then there would have been produce going out. And this here is the dock building. It does actually say it's still the Poets Land Museum. They've just changed the name a little bit. So the museum is now upstairs and if you walk in you go past the nameplate of Paris Castle because obviously this was a railway town. Well this has improved massively since I last visited when it was downstairs. Look at this. 
and the roof space is fantastic. Of course here we're firmly in GWR territory. And well, that's interesting. See that gap there? That gap still exists and trains used to run on the narrow gauge through there. We'll go and have a look in a minute. Nice to see things preserved from Welshpool in the days of the Cambrian Railways, because obviously it was the Cambrian Railways at one point. I do believe that in there is a traditional Welsh hat. This is related to shoemaking here, as you can see. Over here we have the doctors, history of doctors in the town. Mum would have understood all of this. I haven't got a clue what any of this is. I think there's patterns and things to do with sewing in here. Some gentlemen's prerequisites there. And obviously the, uh, the wall. Local soldiers' uniforms. On the left being that of a sergeant, obviously. The local um, unit here being the Montgomery Shire Yeomanry, because we were in Montgomery Shire at one point. With Montgomery, I think about 12 miles to the south of where we are. Is the some of the artifacts from World War One. Well, sadly, many local people die. White goods have come a long way in the intervening years, haven't they? Everything you need in one room. Amazing. And some games. We've got a monopoly like that at home with the old cardboard figures. We need to dig that out. In fact, it's even in that box. Look at that. I used to play on that set when I was a kid. Gas masks. All stuff to do with the war. And an old cooker. Look at that. Fantastic. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a little sewing machine. Oh, I never did. I don't know how the hell that works, but I'm sure somebody does. And these are all candle holders, candle light, because candle light was big around here for quite a long time. Don't forget we are stuck out in the country. I was just going past this interesting display and it caught my eye. So as we come through to the back room, something immediately catches my attention. The grandfather clock, made in Welsh Bullock by a local maker. What a thing of beauty. Wow. I've just inherited a grandfather clock from my parents. I'm, uh, I must admit, I'm quite excited about the prospect of owning one. The coronation. Uh, lots of coinage. See, again, another traditional Irish hat. Oh, look! And yet another beautiful grandfather clock made in Welsh Pool again. Look at that. Oh, I wish these all wound up and running. This is quite grand, this one. Oh, look. Just after we were by the canal, here is a canal boat. This is a standard 70-foot butty. It's called a butty because it's not got an engine in it. These were the, sorry, sorry about the reflection. 
These were the standard horse-drawn boats, laterally towed by motorboats in pairs, doubling the weight that could be carried. I used to work on one of these back in the 70s. This is a buckwheat tin. Traditionally, that would be on the roof of the boat with the mop handle running through it. And there's an example of the roses and castles, which was the traditional decoration on a narrowboat. And of course, Rosie and June famously were narrowboaters, children's characters that were on a narrowboat. Here's the scene look outside. It's different then, but look at that. Showing this very scene. And here's another one. Showing exactly where we are. As you see there, it says the Shropshire Railway something something. Some more painting. Another Buckby tin. And this beautiful, beautiful clock is dated to 1769. Look at that. Whoa. That is stunning. And yet another one. This one dating from 1765. 1769, I beg your pardon. 1769. That's a very nice ceramic wall tile hanging. So much archaeology has come from the area. It's been occupied for thousands of years. Here we have Lake Bronze Age. Notice the spearheads and the weapons and the axe heads. And then as we move along, we're coming into the Iron Age. And you'll notice here that the introduction of jewellery starts to happen. Then we move along up to the Roman period. With all the pottery and glass that they brought with them. And yet another fine grandfather clock. My favourite? Hmm, hard to say. It would probably be this one. It's, it's work a day. It's the sort of thing you'd have found in a farmhouse. It hasn't got any pretensions. It's not posh. It's just the family timepiece. And I like that one. Built as it was in 1844. Well, they've revamped the place, they've put the library downstairs and moved the museum upstairs where it is a much better museum than it ever was before. Um, it's really nicely done in there. Well done Welshpool, well done. Let's move on. I want to show you that gap where the train was going through in that photograph. So I've come back down to the canal. Behind me there you can see the bridge back to where we just came from. If I spin around we're going to go that way. Can you see the bridge? That bridge is where the railway used to cross. That's where we're heading. So here we are at the bridge. But there's also an interesting feature here. If you look behind me down here, you'll see that there's a river running under the canal and it comes in over there. But behind me is the bridge that we're interested in. So let's head up there. So I'm up on the bridge now. See the canal behind me. The railway came down from up there and it ran back that way. Because back that way is the mainline railway station in Welshpool. And Welshpool has always had a huge cattle market or livestock market. This railway used to bring the livestock into that market. It now runs through what is uh, Tesco's but I'll take you down and show you, there is actually a little bit of track left showing. But that way is the gap in the wall that we're going to go and see. So we're going to go that way first, so I can show you some of the remaining track and some cattle pens that still exist. And then we'll come back and we'll walk through here and I'll show you the gap in the wall. You can see the line running towards me there. 
along this path and if I swing round the path there runs up to the bridge over the canal as you can see where the railway once was Tesco's now is so we need to walk round Tesco's and get to the other side Right, we need to go over there. And here as we swing round away from Tesco's, across the road, that's the station in the distance, there, railway track and pen still in existence. I think this has been left here as a, as a tribute to what used to be. What can clearly be seen here is there are three railway lines. Two on the right are the narrow gauge and if you add in the one on the left it becomes standard gauge which meant this track was going towards the main line Mainline trains could actually come up here and load and offload. And these are the pens. Or well, some of them. There would have been hundreds and hundreds of these across the site. This is just a small sample of what's left. This view as we come along here clearly shows Tesco slap straight across the track alignment. And here we can clearly see the dual gauge track again with the narrow gauge closest with the extra rail giving the standard gauge and here we can clearly see the track alignment once again with the three rails giving dual gauges both narrow and standard allowing mainline trains to come into this yard So, let's head back to the bridge. Apparently, this here is the site of a Motton Bailey Castle. I'll need to do some more research on that and maybe come back down and do a film on it. I believe there's a bowls club there now. To give you an idea of the scale here, all of this area you see before you was once cattle pens, just like the ones down by the railway we saw. So we're back at the bridge. We've been that way and seen where the line joined with the main line and the pens and the, the cattle market. Now we're going to go back that way because I want to show you where it goes through the town. So we continue on the railway track up there. It's interesting to note that all this area here that was cattle pens and the area we've come from has been replaced by Europe's largest cattle market about a mile out of town going that way and over the road there there's the cat <laughs> so ignore what I just said because that's not the gap that is and it doesn't look like a gap does it but the building on the left 
form the left hand side of the entrance and the building that is on the right that formed the other side of the gap is now a road. Let's go and have a look. So the building on the left there formed the left hand side of the entrance and you see on the photograph when you look at it that the shop is still there. Now where the road now is was the other side of that gap. So if I put my hand there like that it would have been about there, the side of the building. The track would have run through and then it runs along there where that grass verge is and I'll show you that next. So if you look there, can you see the way that wall is built out? Well, let me just span up here a minute. And there is that same feature on the wall here. So there you go, this is where the trains ran through going towards where that bus is now coming from. So let's look where it went when it went the other way. Well, you can see that grass alignment in front of us. That is the track. Let's go and have a closer look. This wall here is obviously something to do with everything else. I will be having a look to see if I can find out and I'll put a little uh, a subtitle up if I can find out. As I walk to the left, we are now on the alignment of the track. That car is parked on where the tracks would be. Um, and there are, some, there are some shots that I can show you. Look at that slanted roof there. If you look at that slanted roof there, you'll see in the next picture that I'm gonna show you, that roof still in existence. So the train kind of went off and round that way and then disappeared off through that council estate up there. But that's a video for another day. So that's the end of the addendum as I walk along the track bed towards my favourite cafe on the right where I'm headed now with the lovely Laura. Then um, I'm going to go back to the original video which was me two days ago. Well I'm going to end this impromptu video there because I hadn't planned to make a video. I was just coming into town it's supposed to be peeing down with rain. But as you can see it's not. So I thought, well, have my phone, let's make a video. So I did. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna end it there, because I'm gonna go and do what I came into town to do now, and that's a bit of shopping. And then I'm gonna head back to mum's house. So for now, hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.